probably want what I'm doing Every day in the studio Every day in the studio Every day no fully shit In the streets with the ease on In the streets with the hoodie up In the streets gotta get it though you probably wonder if I think of you Sorry I'm for the bag right now Flay? No Games We good? We good maestro? Yeah we're good We're good, we're good maestro? Alright all right, as you can see, we are we have the bloopers, but it's the Mr. Cav- Casanova studio. Mr. Ah, fuck it, it's Robert's <laughs> shit. <laughs> it's Robert, your neighborhood friendly black therapist. Mm-hmm. So anywho, and then his co-host, uh, sidekick, you know, a little Robin action uh, with the red jumpsuit on, uh, Cos here, and Ooh. we got a, we got a special guest today, actually, a, a good friend of mine. I made um, my years at academia at Portland State. And Adidas, actually. And Adidas, yes. Yeah. Please. I'm I'm Rachel. That is my name. What else? What else? Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, Rachel. <laughs> um. You know, I'm just. I'm just out here. <laughs> I don't know. That's a hard question to answer in a time where you're really doing nothing. Um, what? You know, five months of just what's going on? Nothing really. You know. Um, anyway, I've lived here for about five years. Um, I guess I should say that I have a soap business. There we go. Yeah, that's how we want to, yeah. Uh, um, promote yourself a little bit. Do some soap. Yeah, so my sister and I, over um, this, maybe like the past three months, we've been trying to put together this little mm-hmm. um, bath essentials business. It's called Beasting Beauty. Mm-hmm. Um Came up with the name. My sister's name is Brianna, and we call mm-hmm. her B. And it was kind of her project. Yeah. So she, I wanted to somehow incorporate her name into the title of the company. So called it Beasting Beauty. Um, also incorporated like bees somehow, and yeah. made it more of like a um, natural um, based company. Mm-hmm. Like uh, all the names I want, yeah. like plant names, marketing things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And eventually we're working towards having like 100% natural products. Yeah. Um, same with our um, sustainability and our packaging, things mm-hmm. like that. Um, that's just an overall goal that we have. But yeah. yeah, it's super small. We've had one launch of soaps right now. We're almost completely sold out of. Um, we're working on our next two launches. There you go. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much where we're at with that. Of course. And you know, being Portland based, it has to be organic. and. Of course. Yeah, that's whatnot. something you have to think about for sure mm-hmm. um, of just what people are gonna want and you gotta yeah. tell the times and that's go. go green and things like that yeah and on, they can find you on instagram what's the yeah the instagram is b sting beauty um just a b and mm-hmm. then sting beauty mm-hmm. i had to you know someone had her name somehow uh, um but it's just b sting beauty um our shop is currently on etsy i'm working on getting a okay. website up and running um mm-hmm. we also um are trying to get into like um street markets things like that course, eventually yeah. but yeah Okay. Awesome. Etsy is the same, just Beasting Beauty. There you go. Beasting Beauty. Kind of an ironic name, right? Because you don't want to put like, I like it. stingers on yeah. your skin. You know, <laughs> like Beasting. I feel that. Could you bring your mic just closer, just a little bit more? Yeah. Just it keeps falling. Um, I'll have our resident handsome man be handy because... It was slowly dropping. There we go. Okay, cool. Yeah. This is why I love him. <laughs> um, side weird fact, never been stung by a bee. Me neither. I was stung an abnormal <laughs> amount of times when I was younger. I don't know what it was. I just got stung so much as a kid. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> I get stung a bunch by mosquitoes. I will say that. Yeah. Yes. It's my sweet blood. But um, no, I don't, I don't get... I've never gotten a bee stung. I don't, I don't know what it feels like. It's not fun. But uh, awesome. What's your favorite uh, scent you guys have? Yes. Um, we have this scent called bergamot peach. Um, and that do you need real peaches? We do not. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if that it would sustain well, but uh-huh. um, that that's the one we've gotten our our best feedback on, and mm-hmm. I like that that one the most. Um, I don't really know how to describe it. It's like it's kind of like um, there's a I'm, I hate to like put other brands onto this, but like mm-hmm. Victoria's Secret has a very similar scent um, mm-hmm. called Love Spell mm-hmm. that is super popular somehow. 
Um, but that's kind of what it smells like. Um, and then we also have one that smells exactly like Skittles. What? That people love. Oh, yeah. Smells it, like to Skittles? To the tea. Smells like Skittles. Could I give you a suggestion? Sure. What about Sour Patch Kids? Would you make something that smells like that? Would you like want that? to put Sour Patch Kids on your body? Oh, yeah. Uh, Is that something? Okay. Oh, no. That's a okay. dream. That's okay. actually if a that's dream. like a popular opinion, maybe I'll I'm going to take a hard it, pass on <laughs> No. If, what? You would ne- I no. would take a shower. It's a, I'm Robert sorry. loves Sour Patch Kids. That's Crack. Like, Actually, I got to put you on. There's a Sour Patch Kids uh, IPA I found. It tastes oh. just like Sour Patch Kids. No. <laughs> but but I was like, you never know. You said skills. I was like, Sour Patch Kids. Why not? Yeah, no, you never know. Endless, endless possibilities. Starburst? That, but it's all super similar, you know? It's all that fruity, right? Mm-hmm. Starburst, Skittles, Sour Patch Kids. They all kind of the have rainbow. that same. I don't know. How about some like downtown Portland mud? Oh. <laughs> yeah, come out with a natural like a mud mask. Natural, yeah. And you just go, you scrape it up from like uh, waterfront. Like actually, turns out that it's not mud and <laughs> <laughs> just accidental uh, substances. Okay, okay. All right, so let's uh quick transition here. Wait, wait. I oh, got sorry. Some, I got oh, apologize. Please. I got some soap questions. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you have like? Would you all in the future? Um, have like because I know you brought up Victoria's Secrets and then you know you brought up a few other things mm-hmm. where like they're very geared for like coupley stuff. Do you like have like bundles where like you have his secret pleasures or her divine secrets? <laughs> Do you- so I mean, that's definitely something I've thought of. Not necessarily in like a couple version, but we do have. Um, and my sister is more of the creative mind behind creating the actual products. I'm mm-hmm. more just all the business. But um, the holidays are coming up. We're trying to find some um, holiday scents and um, putting packages together for bundles for Christmas, things like that, little gift packages. Um, and we just got a bunch of men's fragrances. So those more musky Manly smells. I love um, musk. So those will be coming out <laughs> to appeal to that audience a little bit more. But, Dr. Squatch. Um, yeah. Where, do, where does your sister get musk from? Musk? Yeah. I'm just that's well, a really it, random question. But I'm like really into colognes and I've always wondered how you like get the musk. Well, I don't I don't know. She probably orders she, it. Huh? She orders it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we do a mix of like essential oils and just mm-hmm. fragrance oils yeah. because you got a lot more range with fragrance oils, mm-hmm. but essential oils are the popular thing when it comes to bath products and things like that. So Yeah. It's just, you just, they're out there. You just got to find it. Uh-huh. Okay. I don't know necessarily if it will transfer into a cologne type thing, but I could I put you on so many good colognes that use musk. <laughs> you know how they collect musk actually? I don't Tell us. I uh, love this version because I don't get to see this as often. Please tell the us. The cologne side of me is a little more hidden. Um, you know, they go to a cow and they Cologne's scrape the it. sweat off of its uh, testicles. What? Musk is 100% the smell of testosterone. That is what musk is. So, and they refine it to an oil and whatnot, and that's how you get the smell. And whose balls are they looking? Cows, Cows primarily. Oh. Like bulls. <laughs> what? It's like you I just told you how hot dogs are made. <laughs> it's like oh hot dogs are disgusting. <laughs> you don't like the glizzies, man? <laughs> I used to be a hot dog. But we're, what? It's ball sweat from cows? That's from what, I, what I've heard from like people in the industry. Yeah. Wow. That's why when, when boys get super nasty, they say you smell musky. Mm-hmm. I guess that makes sense. But that's why women really are attracted that's... to the smell of a sweaty man. Oh, gosh. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> what? You don't like me putting on Axe after I play basketball? That's the hug worst. You? No, don't put on Axe. <laughs> that used to be the My thing brother has school. an Axe problem. He'll just. <gasps> oh. He's he'd be like, 16, you know, you gotta. Okay, he's gotta 16, smell I nice guess. For the ladies and oh, whatnot, he's like, but... ooh, look at my six pack. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> ah. All right, so can I make the transition now? <laughs> All right. So the reason we brought you on was mm-hmm. because we always talk about how we want a little more of a female opinion on the show. You know, we're two dudes talking about relationship and, you know, it takes two to tango. Right. So, and then, you know, I brought this idea up to you and you said you had a, some juicy stories to tell. So, you know. Yeah. Please spill the tea. Is there a topic? I have stories. Mm. Okay. Let's, I guess the big topic for this episode I want to focus on was like dating in your early 20s in the year 2020 or like 2019 because i don't really count this year as a year so um okay um i mean <clears throat> dating is rough <laughs> i think we all agree that dating kind of 
it was rough. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I have a lot of stories just from college in general. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about one in particular. I mean, dating in your 20s is rough. Um, yeah. Early, late teens, not early teens, late teens um, into your 20s, like that transitional period from high school to college, whatever, it all sucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I'm 24 right now and it still sucks. But um, when I was going to college, you know, when you're um, fresh out of high school and you go into college, people tell you don't go to college with a significant other don't date someone on your on your way into college right you yeah. have you heard that <sighs> that's what you're told right and then you're like no no it'll be fine we'll do long distance it'll be great it'll work out right? we love each other yeah and it's just gonna be perfect yeah yeah so i had one of those um <laughs> and that lasted maybe a month after i was gone out oh. of college um, so but, you went to Portland State. Where did he go? No, no. I, I, my first year. So I was living in Arizona for oh. high school. So I grew up in the Seattle area until I was about fourteen. Moved oh, okay. to Arizona for high school. Uh -huh. My first freshman year of college, I was at um, a small school in Wyoming, Powell, Wyoming. I played soccer there. I only went there to play soccer. Uh -huh. okay. Um, okay. and then came back, went to Clark College in Vancouver for two years, okay. and then I graduated from Portland State, where I was at for two years. Ah, uh, okay. Um, so I've been, around, been around, around, been around town. Um, so just a couple weeks ago, um, my friend was going through her phone and looking at all these screenshots that she had from this time that I was dating this guy. Mm -hmm. And, um, it was kind of the first, it, it's, you look at things that happened in your past in hindsight and you're like, Oh my God, why did I ever get involved in that kind of situation? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have a lot of those stories, um, but this one in particular, um, like just looking back at this guy and and just his insecurities and um, how he his expectations of me basically were very high. Mm -hmm. um, so she was going through her phone and she found this screenshot from 2014, and um, it was I remember this happening. I was like in in my dorm um and we had sweet dorms so we all had our own room in this big living room so mm -hmm. we had a bunch of um the men's soccer players sitting in our in our dorm and yeah. um i got this text from my boyfriend at the time and it was this list of expectations that he had for me while i was at college really yes um it was just 16 points to be exact there were 16 points <coughs> on this list and she found it and she came into the kitchen last week and she was like you will not believe what i just found um and that's a strong ass dog <laughs> that, that dog is a, that is a, the door. a deaf dog oh, oh yeah that is a deaf dog sorry for the disruption <laughs> no that's so sad that's a strong dog <laughs> Deaf dog opened the door. The talk opened the door. He said, knock, knock. <laughs> said, knock, knock, bitches. <laughs> I'm getting this. Oh, oh, man. Wow. Adrian, I'm super sorry. Yeah, sorry no, it's that. fine. I feel bad for that dog. <laughs> yeah, deaf dog. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah, so she found this list, and I had been looking for it because I've – I've told my mom about it and I, I wanted to tell her the list mm -hmm. and cause she just wouldn't believe it. And, mm -hmm. um, she found this list and we went through and I'm like, are you kidding me? Um, and I have it. Do you want me to read some of them? You Hell have it? Yeah. Uh, well, she found the screenshots of it. Thank you. I was, Oh my, you we know need the receipts. You know where I'm going. She found the screenshots of them. Um, and this is just the most toxic thing I think I've ever <laughs> been a part of and at the time you just don't you just don't see it like when you're in those relationships i was yeah. listening to your guys's podcast that you did last week like she was talking about when you're in those relationships that you just love so much you just don't see bad things happening right yeah. this is prime example okay um someone did their research <laughs> i did i had to know what i was getting myself into um so keep in mind that this is 2014 <laughs> wow i'm only gonna read a couple of them okay Aww. Context matters. Thank you. I see. That's why I appreciate you because mm -hmm. never mind. I have a rant about that later, but yes. Okay. <laughs> so this is 2014. Um, and just uh, none of this needed to be said. I'll say that. Just mm -hmm. none of it needed to be out there. Like I, I'll go on. Number one is no boys numbers unless gay BFF or homework help. Whoa. <laughs> Sound effects. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. And then um, a lot of them end with unless gay. So basically, oh, I'm that's only why you said allowed. 2014. Yes. <laughs> so I basically I was only allowed to be friends with a man if they were gay. Like I was only allowed to spend that amount of time if they were gay. Okay. Basically. Okay. And doors, boxes, <laughs> being. Okay. So. Um, number two is only hang out with guys in group settings. Parentheses three plus people, minimum of two girls. Whoa. Like, they're very specific. Whoa. They're very specific. Um, number three, no homework help with you and another boy alone in room. Unless they're gay. Unless they're gay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a living room for that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to skip ahead because mm-hmm. those ones are... We don't need to go into those ones. But um, number nine is kind of funny. Um, I'll explain why. Uh, no new loves of your life or yeah. Wyoming bays. So actually, the day that I broke up with this one, mm-hmm. I met the love of my, like I met this guy that I dated for three years, yeah. and we had like this big relationship, which I think is super ironic. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. But ten, it was a small school, so we had a lot of dances. Um, just and it was also Wyoming, so they were like line dancing, square dancing kind of dances. Sick. Yeah. No, it was so fun. You wouldn't yeah. think it'd be fun, but it was so I fun. Got, I gotta take you to Bushwhackers uh, when uh, the world opens up again. I ain't <laughs> Do some line dancing. No, they gonna say things about me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. They might make it racial. Maybe. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Um, number 10 is at a dance. Don't be the wasted, vulnerable chick. Um, <laughs> Whoa, what is this just assuming, sh- you know, I'm 18, didn't, didn't drink in high school. Like just, that mm-hmm. I'm going to come to college and just screw yourself, everything yeah. that I believe, you know, just like yeah. sc- screw, screw that. Okay. I okay. Never, oh my God. Wow. Right. This is blowing your mind. Is it not? Would you ever even think about think about who you were back in 2014 were you ever like <laughs> that insecure that like you know what i'm saying well i just lost a lot of weight and i, and I was like man damn wait. i'm fine wait how old were you in 2016 or 2014 oh, oh i just graduated uh eight years ago yeah i just graduated six years ago college so. oh no that was all oh, that's 2010 i'm old fuck never mind no i just graduated college but no i was even more skinny then <laughs> Anywho. I was 16 Never kissed a girl To that point So I would not have The right to put uh, Rules on her I didn't kiss anyone Until I was 16 So Aww. Mm-hmm. Yeah Look at this Bonding moment <laughs> Why well, I, well I kissed a girl In the bushes When I was three Now I got in trouble <laughs> <laughs> Hey we both Did agree you say here. you were three Yes Oh okay <laughs> Yes we were both In the bushes yeah, like, I kissed I was watching Sailor Moon, and I was like, she was watching Sailor Moon, and I was like, this is the perfect time. <laughs> there you go. All right. Please continue, Rachel. Okay. Um, no dancing with other guys, unless gay, uh-huh. or very G-rated. G-rated. G-rated dancing, so like that's shopping cart or whatever. I don't even know what G-rated is. 2014. A wiggle. I don't know. Um, <laughs> 13. <laughs> Is no late night after parties in other guys' dorms. Mm, unless, unless, they're gay. Gay. unless they're gay. Oh, come on. We have to get it out of the unison. Come yeah, on. I'm sorry. Next one. Next, next one. one. Next one. Oh, yeah, there we go. Here. Okay. I don't know why this one even needed to be said, um, but no sleepovers in other guys' dorms. Unless, unless you're gay. gay. Um, and then the last one is him being just, he's just, he tries to be relatable. He goes, just be normal and don't become this like flirty party animal chick just so people like you because I don't like that with a bunch of laughing faces. Ooh. Um, and oh wait, I forgot to mention one because he contradicts himself. Um, I think it was. It's number eight. Okay, he number goes. Eight. Try eight. and talk to me as much as you can, but don't feel like you need to check in every two seconds. Unless you're. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, but that's not the vibe you get when you get like a three page list like that, right? Yeah. Like, it's not like, oh yeah, no, he's totally fine if I don't talk to him every single second. And then the last one he goes, um, or he has, he adds a little PS at the end. He goes, 
I still like to know a lot of details about everything, so you will still be calling me at least every night. Oh my god. Whoa. So in point number what eight, he said, You don't don't feel like you have to call me and then he goes, No, but you will be calling me every night. And he's coming straight out of a comic book. What? Oh, yeah, so that's my list. There's the a lot more that I did. Yeah. Those were like half of them, but Um Yo, I yo, that is toxic as fuck. Yeah. Oh my oh. It's it was bad. <laughs> it was bad. What well, how soon after that did you break up with him? Um, I don't remember. I think after I got that, I was debating on... He had a trip planned to come see me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was debating on um, letting him come there and then me breaking up with him. Mm-hmm. And, like to see like, okay, what's... Because there's a lot of other stuff with him that I have had found out and um, just made me want to cut ties. But yeah. Um, he was planning this trip and I, I was talking to my roommates, my family. I'm like, should I break up with him before he comes? Like, what if he comes here and he's this totally different person? And I didn't, you know, just long distance is hard. I'd never done a long distance relationship. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, I kind of gave him the benefit of the doubt. Um, and then he came to visit a couple weeks later. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> the first night he was like going through my computer and, um, like just looking at all my messages. And I was like, all right, that's, that's, that's gonna be that so um yeah like i had to hide my computer when i went to class or just take my computer and then he would like confront just because not that i was hiding everything anything Mm -hmm. but like i haven't seen you in a month and that's the first thing you're gonna do is go through to make sure i'm not cheating on you which i'm not Mm -hmm. you know it's just it was rough so, so you know. I will say I have seen him since then, um, like two oh. years ago. Completely different person. So I'll okay. say that. Like, so he has changed. He has changed immensely. It was mm-hmm. he was kind of like the high school bad boy. So he <laughs> he grew out of, <laughs> if you will, like whatever yeah. that means. But uh-huh. um, he is a completely different person. He he's apologized immensely for what? for his behavior. Oh. Like you know, like he has come around. But at that point, mm-hmm. like it was not great. Not a great time. And you think that was just like insecurity and immaturity at the time? I think so. I think so. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody's got their reasoning for the way they act. And mm-hmm. um, I, I don't necessarily know his, but um, yeah. I, yeah. I'm glad it went full circle because I had some other stuff lined up. Yeah. Well, because I just want to speak upon one. I appreciate you saying context because like when we do and talk about certain stuff, people forget the 2000s the 1990s all that stuff happened where i was kind of like you know guys acted differently yes based upon these terms more misogynistic now you know smart guys adapt all that other stuff so i appreciate saying that and it's just i i'm actually i like that it it went full circle and Mm -hmm. he was man enough to be like yo i was a dick (laughs) this was dick and stuff and like did you accept his apology? That's the thing. I did, yeah. I mean, I don't... If someone apologizes for... I'm not the same person I was four years ago. Like, I've had my screw-ups over the years. I'm not the same person. He's had his screw-ups. So, mm-hmm. I don't think I, now in present day, should judge him for something he did five years ago if he's since apologized for it and become yeah. a different person for it. Um, I think, you know, you judge people for who they are today and right now and not him being a douchebag in high school <laughs> yeah. you know like <laughs> <laughs> i have to make that as a clip <laughs> oh this list has to be a clip this <laughs> was a fucking clip. wild yeah be, see i you know it's funny because i also too was in a long distance relationship but like mine lands for like a year and some change you know out here i could be slandering i should slander her name but we ain't got no time for that because we've matured but there's like more backstory to it sure. because she got real bold over the last two years i was like who where the fuck you from mm-hmm. anywho but it's just kind of like um i really it's it was just, it's just interesting like hearing your story because like i guess for people who are thinking about that or in it, why did you choose to do a long distance relationship? Could you, could you elaborate a little bit more about that? Um, I'm going to be honest with you. Like at that time, I think I was just too scared to end it. Um, Mm -hmm. like, Mm -hmm. you know, when you get in situations, you, you like someone, you just don't want to, 
you get kind of coerced into, okay, let's see how it goes and let's see if it happens. And I've always been someone who's too scared to end things. Mm -hmm. And so I'll let it go to like further than it needs to go. Mm -hmm. Um, just in relationships in general. Um, so I think that's kind of what it was. Like my Mm -hmm. family didn't really like him. I had no reason, like I wasn't, I didn't think I was going to marry him. Like it was just, I, it was kind of a comfort thing too, knowing I was going to go across the country to go to school. And I still had this person from a place that I lived and was mm-hmm. a big part of me that I can kind of cling on to a little bit while I'm having this new adventure. But once my new life started to kind of pick up, I was mm. like, okay, <laughs> it's time to hit the road. But uh-huh. um, yeah, it was, I don't think it was ever something that I saw long-term, but it was, it was a hard one for me to kind of cut ties with in mm. a way. Yeah. Like that, that comfortability, that's what hurts. Even cause I know we're talking about even though you know, I ain't that much, younger than me like i ain't old that old but it's kind of like comfortability is like a theme that no matter what like in all relationships even in the Mm -hmm. younger generation where it's kind of like stuff like that and no it's um i appreciate you sharing that because it seems like now i don't think that is too much of a blimp on your like on your like dating life going forward where you're kind of like i'm not going to do these things out of comfort where a lot of people even reflecting won't even admit to like you know what (laughs) I stay with him because he had some good pain. It was comfortable, right. <laughs> or like you know, or stuff yeah. like that. You know, it's yeah. it's it's like yeah. it's and like <laughs> yeah, I definitely did some things. I stayed out of comfort, but like the toughest thing to do is what you did, right? Mm-hmm. So I. It was a weird. Thank you. It was a weird breakup too, because he had we. D- I did it while he was visiting me in Wyoming. Oh. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. this was yeah, like yeah. a live event. Yeah. A live event. He, it was. It was something like he had confronted this friend I made um, in Oregon because we texted about homework and we hung out quite mm-hmm. a bit because I had just my family had just moved to Oregon when I went to Wyoming, so I found all of these Oregon people that I knew in Wyoming that Mm. I could make friends with and come home and hang out with, right? So I was super excited and I was hanging out with these dudes. None of them were gay. So I was breaking all of the rules. Oh, no. Um, (laughs) So, and I had been texting one of them about homework and we hung out a lot. And um, he found that, thought something fishy was going on and like tried to fight him while I was outside, right outside. Our dorms were set up to where the soccer field was right outside of my dorm. Mm -hmm. And I was playing a game, and he was oh. trying to do this while my game was going. And then um, when the boys came on the field and we came off, this this guy passed me, and he goes, listen, your boyfriend just tried to fight me, like, at the dorms. I don't know if you want to handle that or what. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and so he, like, missed half of my game. He came out. I have, like, a scar on my leg because I slide tackled a girl and, like, got cut. Like, it was so – it was such a dramatic day. Right when yeah. I stood up, like, my leg was bleeding. I looked at him in the face, and I was like <laughs> – like it's done um, you gave the- <laughs> I didn't physically do that but like my face was not I was not happy yeah um, and so he like tried to talk to me we walked back to my dorm and I like closed the door and I was like listen I this just can't happen like it was so it was super dramatic too like his dad put him up in a hotel in town and oh he came to pick him up and they did a road trip which was nice I mean they got mm-hmm. a road trip but he had um, to send his ass home it was like it was <laughs> It was a. It, I don't. I don't even know how to explain it. It was the weirdest breakup situation. Uh, Cancun ever. on three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was. It was a lot. <laughs> Damn. All right. It was very dramatic. And this just goes into the theme of like protect. Like I can only imagine how traumatic that that was, or just the whole situation. Because like certain people t- say like your story. I don't and chime in too as well. Mm-hmm. Where it's kind of like I don't know. For me, like dating around talking to other females where like that story would define their entire like interaction with males going forward and mm-hmm. from what my from what i'm hearing from you is you have a lot of cognitive flexibility when it comes to like well that's just that person right and like you're not letting that define other interactions mm-hmm. are you hearing that too as well yes yeah, yeah. You know, i'm just kind of like so, yeah i don't have a personal example myself but i see I hear you, you don't have that <laughs> i wasn't sick with like cost you give an example <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, I'm definitely that person where um, everybody's a new person. Like, I, mm. I try not to bring back. I, it's, it's kind of hard for me to relate when I do start dating someone new and they say they have these issues because someone hurt them like this, which is are totally valid and mm. I understand them fully. But that's just not something that I 
bring on to a new relationship. I treat it as a clean slate, yeah. fresh start. Um, even if that person has stuff in their past, like if you're honest with me and you tell me things like uh, you haven't shown that to me. So, mm-hmm. um, I think it's something things are, you should be aware of them, but, um, I think everybody's a clean state slate, fresh start, things like that. Fellas, did you hear that? If we don't lie to our women, it's you- that easy. It really is just <laughs> that easy. But sometimes, sometimes I'm not going to lie. I'm not a liar, but what do you, white lies. What do you think is an, an appropriate white lie? And I'll tell you if that's correct. Uh, oh, 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 I got one. You got one? If she, you know, she, if she's wearing something that I think is okay, but she likes it, I'll say, oh, yeah, I really like that shirt or I really like that dress or whatever, even if I'm like, eh, it's, I prefer something maybe else or whatever. But if she's feeling herself, I'm not going to put mm-hmm. her down and be like, ah, oh, you should change. Mm-hmm. Yes, I agree with that. That's mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. And it's, and it's a thing where, um, I mean, don't be like so obvious that you don't like it because I can, love we it. Can it's tell so that. great. We can tell that. We can tell that. <laughs> but um, yes. if it's something where you like don't like her style mm-hmm. as a whole, like some people really like a vintage fashion. Some people like to dress more streetwear. Like, yeah. you know, some people like different styles. Guilty. If it's something that you don't like her style, I say also don't tell them <laughs> unless she's dressing like frumpy, like, you know. I feel like I'm being attacked. I used to be a grungy dude, and I really in, yes, yeah, yeah. I used to like wear constant hoodies and uh-huh. didn't care. My brother introduced me to fashion, so I agree with you. But I feel like as your man, I gotta enhance you. So if you no, ain't... that's also true. That's where I was leading okay, up to okay, because okay, okay. because you best believe girls are doing the same thing with their boyfriends. Mm-hmm. If listen, if you don't own a pair of jeans, you will own fifty by the time that that relationship is a year oh, yeah, and like uh, you will <laughs> you will be <laughs> enhanced daily and i think that's something that girls especially are proud to do like look what i did to my, look how cute he dresses now look how good he looks like something they're proud to do um which you guys may not agree with but you benefit from it so <laughs> yeah my last ex i used to she was like, you should drink milk. And I was like, I don't want to drink milk. I mean, no, she said, you should drink uh, um, almond milk. And I was like, I don't want to drink almond milk. I'm going to drink regular milk because I like my cereal. And then she made an ultimatum. I was like, fuck this shit. And then three years later, I drink nothing but almond milk. There Every time really? I pour a glass, I say, fuck. <laughs> she got me. There you go. Oh, that's good. But yeah. that was a little um, white lie. I want one. I just want to throw this out here. If a, what if I don't like one of your friends? Can I say that? Um. Yeah. Okay. okay. Great. I think I think that should be said. I don't. I like Tiffany. It's my hair. <laughs> no, I. You know, I don't think you should lie about like liking people. I think if you have a, if you have a problem with someone, that's yeah. one thing. But if you just don't like their personality, I think that's fine because if someone told me that, I'm like, okay, maybe don't do like group settings with. Like, maybe don't do a double date with her and her boyfriend or, um, you know, it's things to avoid. That's just a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A meet in the middle situation. Mm -hmm. What's the word? Yeah. Compromise. Yes. It's a compromise. You got to compromise on some things. Um, Definitely. Obviously, if it's like your best friend and they don't, I've had that situation where someone I was dating didn't like my best friend and that was like, okay, well, that's my best friend, (laughs) you know? Um, but and that was just more of a thing where okay you don't like her but you're gonna have to get used to her because she's not going anywhere type of thing. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah but I, I got a story about that. <laughs> <laughs> I lost some people in my life, me life. Um, but yeah, I, I feel that. I feel that. So yeah. All right. Uh, kind of transition a bit. You know, we mm-hmm. both went to Portland State. Yes. Can we talk about how awful it is to date at Portland State and how like because it's a commuter school. And it's really bad. Reasons. It's really bad. Um, why do you think it's awful? I'm well, one, because it's like, okay, if, um, you know, a lot of girls I saw that, you know, I try to talk to there, they show up to class, they're in class, and then they go home. They drive home. Right. They're not on campus long. They don't want to talk to people. They just want to get class right. over with and whatnot. Also, the girls I ended up talking to and, like, hanging out with, seeing for a bit were all girls that, you know, 
smoked cigarettes and sh- sh- Very shopped, school, shopped yes. only at like Buffalo Exchange and that stuff. Correct. Which that's fine. I don't, you know, I have nothing against that. Whoa. But it's, not it's a very specific type of person that goes to Doc Portland Martins, State University. Yeah. Ripped up okay, jeans. I have Doc Martens. Doc Martens are great, but if that's all you wear. If that's all you wear. Stomping on people. Uh, that's true. Who is this guy? <laughs> I don't hey, see him. <laughs> <That's laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's why I actually hate, I, like, that's my one real like I have a lot of gripes against Portland State, but that's one like it was like it's like yeah. yeah, the dating pool at Portland State is not large. Um, it's not a great. I don't think it's a great place to find. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of people, a lot of my friends met their significant other husband wife now mm-hmm. in college and i'm like well i kind of got gypped of that opportunity yeah. like i didn't i didn't really have the best <laughs> candidates out there uh-huh. um not to say that i didn't date in college but the ones i did i wish i didn't you know like <laughs> I, I they weren't lasting the people i met in college were not lasting at portland state specifically were not mm-hmm. lasting um prospects so they were nerds they weren't nerds they weren't nerds. They just were not... Um, Burnouts. I heard this quote once. Ooh. Um, there's this quote that said, don't settle relationally out of loneliness. And I think that's what a lot of people do in college is just like they're trying to date people. So like I dated this guy for like three weeks and mm-hmm. I was very upfront at the beginning. I was like... Um, I don't know if I, like, want a serious relationship right now. Like, we can go on dates, but, like, I I don't really want this to turn into a relationship. And then I got hooked into something where it was I was the bad guy because I was, like, playing him in some way where I'm like, listen, I was very upfront with you at the beginning. I didn't want a relationship. Like, we went to the movies a couple times, and we did all these fun things, like, out on the town. But in my mind, it was like, okay – like we're we're buds and maybe is I wasn't. This, is this the one I know? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Maybe it, I wasn't as clear, but I, I I and ultimately I like felt bad in the end because I was like, okay, now I feel like I I played you, but I didn't because I was very honest with you at the beginning about my feelings and I had just gotten out of a relationship, mm-hmm. so I was like, I will get to know you. I want to get to know you for sure, but you know. Yeah, and not to mention we had the same crowd of people have, yeah. in Portland State. So then he's going and telling these people and other things, and my friends come up to me and said, "Did you do this?" I'm like, "No, <laughs> what are you talking about?" I'm like, "Yeah, I, and that's I exactly no, what I was gonna say yeah. too, because like I'm I know that crowd, and yeah. I, uh-huh. I was associated a little bit with that. So I I heard that like you kind you know our mutual friend starting. With yes. Not a Which was my. You might as well just say the damn name now. We've narrowed it down. So. Oh, let's believe that one. <laughs> Please. Oh, there it is. Wait. Yeah, I know you got it first. We're going to believe okay, that. Okay, I'm going to put. Said it. Okay. We oh, wait a second. I guessed the name? Yeah, you guessed the His name. name is... You guessed no, the name. It's... Oh, well, then we have multiple mutual friends. We have. Oh. Because. Nicholas? I don't know. The guy I'm know. talking about that I played, quote unquote. Um. He was friends with my ex. So it was a sticky... But then my ex went to Alaska. My uh, No, no, no. No empathy for my ex. Like, no empathy for this guy fuck that I dated in, in college. Yes, fuck The that worst. Guy. Yes. Uh, just the worst emotionally abusive. Like, oh, yes. the worst. The worst person. He went to Alaska, and so he was gone. And we, it was this conversation that me and this other guy had. He was like, listen, I don't want to, like, tarnish my friendship with, with him. And... Yeah, sure. And um, I don't was, hype me up like I that. I was like, what? I was like, who cares? Like he's, <laughs> it was that was that was on me. I was like, he's not worth. Like at that point, I was like, he's not worth, like, my time, yeah. my whatever. But it was my fault for staying connected into that group. But yeah, but for me, it was it was Nathan that it told was Nathan, me yeah. that you kind of played, you know, his roommate or sure. whatever. And I was like, really. And then I like asked you while we were on one of our shifts at like Adidas. Yeah. And I was like, "Hey, I heard like, are you in whatever? I have a thing or whatever." And you're like, "No, no." And you're like, "Yeah, you no, broke it down like what you said is completely different than what from what I heard." Yeah, and, I, and like, I think people when they start dating, they start to fantasize all of these things that could happen, and then yes. when it doesn't happen, they're so upset that it's not happening, mm-hmm. and it, they blame the other person. Where it's like, okay, you just took ten strides ahead of where I was. Mm-hmm. Like I was at like negative three, and now you're like plus twelve. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going Who on. Are you and why are you on the market? You are. 
<laughs> She's saying like multiple things that, you know. I've been through some stuff. Let me tell you. I like said, I've been through some stuff. What? What? We just want to be clear. We bleeping this name. Yes, please bleep all the names. All the names you want None of these people are in my life, but I also I just I don't wanna I don't wanna throw anybody Let's be the honest, bus. they're probably not gonna see this. <laughs> they're probably not, but uh, but I wanna be able to like promote uh, you guys on my page and like if they see oh, that yeah. and they're like, Oh, that's a good point. Okay, we'll bleep the names. Uh, <laughs> whatever. He'll if if he this sees it, he'll know. As much as yours is mine, sir. I'm just playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Out of Any respect th- for those people, you never know. You never know. Out of respect. I, I see. This is what I appreciate. Uh, I I'm not gonna say women in general. I'm gonna say people in general. It's just so hard for people to have just like what you're talking about. Because I'm just like, huh? What are you talking about? You talking about this 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 golden liquid gold shit? Where it's kind of like you have like that flexibility to be like, all right, we don't have to kick it all the time, but I still want to kick it with you. Or like, right. you know, that, that understanding of be that just that empathy. But I just got questions that mm-hmm. I would like to ask, yeah. even though we'll bleep those names. Um, you got to tell me the reasons why was they feet stinking, you know, was the career not going well? And you're like, look here, I can't get on the strain record. What, well, what was the thing? Um, with this, with, are we bleeping names? Can I say the names? This is what bleeping. Okay, so with, <laughs> um, with him, who was the one I just went on a couple dates with for like a month, um, our conversations were just very dry. Like we would the the connection we didn't have a we didn't have any sort of connection. Like we would we would hang out and um, we went to movies and things where you're not really talking. Like when you go to the movies, you're not talking. You're sitting there watching. Movies are movie. terrible dates. It's a terrible date. Yeah. Um, and then it was just like awkward a lot. Like that's yeah. most of the time I'm not going to continue something if it's just like awkward and we don't have things to talk about. I'll give it like maybe two dates. Mm-hmm. And then if it's still awkward, I'm like, okay, you're just an awkward person. Like this isn't, <laughs> this isn't, <laughs> this isn't just like first date jitters. This is, we're awkward together. It's not going to work out. So yeah. like conversations are very dry. Like I would tell him personal things and he'd be like, oh yeah, that sucks. Like things <laughs> like, things like that where it, it just was like, okay, you have n- no compassion. You're super boring. It's it's just not it's just not in the field for me. Um, so that that was that. Um, and then with my the guy that I dated at Portland State for quite a bit of time, um, he just had he had a lot of um, he had a lot of baggage um, emotionally and um, family stuff. Like he had been through a lot in his life and. Um, unfortunately he let that define who he was in relationships and just how he treated people and how he acted. And, um, I think, you know, he, he played, I don't want to, I don't want to like sound bad when I say it, but like he did play the victim a lot. Um, and granted he has been through an immense amount of, of stuff in his life, which I give props, but at some point you have to start taking accountability for your life and take it back. Um, and that's just something I didn't see out of him. And he put a lot of stress on me to try to make him someone that he wanted to be in a way. Like we couldn't go on dates cause he was stressed out cause he thought he looked ugly. Like he mm. would cancel on me to do things. He was so insecure. Um, and I kind of felt responsible for his happiness, which is why I didn't leave that when I should. I don't think, I don't even think that's a relationship I wanted to be in in the first place. Like we were friends for a good time going into it. And then he express all these feelings towards me and I'm like okay what like what do I do now because like he's so emotionally unstable that I'm I'm like scared to leave Mm -hmm. him just in general like I don't know what he's gonna do I don't know like you know it's one of those I was manipulated basically into being that person for him and I should have never been that person for him um but yeah so that was an entirely different situation on its own but Mm -hmm. um yeah Sorry, that was a lot. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think once again because I I feel like he's like 27 28 like damn it. Anywho, uh uh and I would just say just from like a therapist side when it comes to I agree the whole lot and I don't think you're like victim shame or anything like that because there comes a point in therapy where I'm where I'm like 
are you gonna let this narrative define your whole story? Like mm-hmm. this a part this is a part of your um we'll just say and I'll generalize someone would do a very traumatic thing, right? Mm-hmm. And you have you have to have all the time and space to heal from that. But if you're still talking about that same trauma three, four, five years into the future, right? What is that? It's literally defining who right. you are. Yeah. And when you look at your whole book of Cox, there's more to your story. Are you going to let this one chapter define everything else that hasn't been written? Mm-hmm. And that's something that I have to, as you know, as a narrative therapist, help people define their narrative. You know, also being trauma informed because you get in relationships like that where it's kind of like, do I, you know, am I pretty enough to go out? Now, you're, this is like my thing I always run into the ground, right? <clears throat> you are a prime number. And anyone else in your life is an exponent because you define your happiness and then your partner adds to it. So they're just an amplifier to it. And then you can get held hostage with those things of like, well, I'm not going to go out because of that. And it does fall on your partner. We're like, "Uh, am I supposed to do this? Am I not supposed to do this? When you, which you ultimately found out in a healthy relationship, you do Mm -hmm. that for certain periods, but not all the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and that was something where I hid that relationship from my parents. They knew that we were friends. I hid it from my best friends. I hid it from everyone because I knew that they were going to disapprove of it. Mm. Um, It was like, I don't want to like get too far into him specifically as a person, but like, um, um, I don't know. It was just like when I say he didn't want to go out because he didn't think he looked good enough, like, it was a full blown panic attack. Like I would have to leave the room because mm-hmm. he was like mm-hmm. hitting the wall. Like he was like freaking out, and that was a common occurrence. And so we couldn't do normal coupley things a lot of the time because he was so insecure. And um, yeah, and it was it was also something where um, yes, he did he did have all this trauma, but he, every time something happened, he'd be like, okay, well it was because this happened that I'm like this. And so he was kind of accepting that that's, that's just how he was going to be for the rest of his life. And, um, um, it was the mess up. So I'm, I'm a Christian. Um, I go to church. Um, that's something that's also very important to me in relationships. And, um, oddly enough, I haven't been in a lot of relations. Like I've been in one really strong faith-based relationship and it was my last Mm-hmm. Um, boyfriend but this one I would take him to church I've never been like a pushy like hey if you date me you're gonna have to go to church like I know mm-hmm. what I'm getting myself into when I date someone yeah. mm-hmm. um and I would take him and he at the end he used that against me when I was breaking up he's like I wanted to find God with you like I wanted to do all these oh. things and I'm like I'm like I can't I'm I can't be that person like I just can't be that person for you and um there was a point where I I had no trust for him and like um he we had this weird relationship before we actually started dating where we were talking but he was also talking to other girls sleeping with other girls um and so i didn't really have a whole lot of trust in in him going into our relationship so i would look at his messages like he would say awful things about me when i would upset him like he called me a religious hoe one time on messages and i was like Mm -hmm. (laughs) like he was talking to this girl and um and she was like, she sounds like a hoe. And he goes, yeah, a religious hoe. And I was like, oh, oh my God. And for some reason, I like stayed, I stayed in that for a while because I felt so personally responsible for his happiness mm-hmm. that I just was like, I, I, I felt like I didn't have a choice. Like I had to stay. So yeah, during that whole year, like I was extremely depressed. Um, I moved home to be with my parents. Like it felt like one thing after another, just things started like falling out of place my car got towed like (laughs) just a bunch of stuff like I was like I can't do it I was super overwhelmed um and I moved home I came home crying just told my mom everything that had happened and she's like okay well you can move home do what you like do what you got to do and within a month of us being broken up I was a completely different person Mm -hmm. um so in that way I don't (laughs) like it's okay to have past traumas I have them we all have them Mm -hmm. um but Putting that on someone else is not okay. Yeah. That's that's where it's got to be. The line's got to be drawn on that. Do you feel like you're stronger now because you went through all that? Yeah. I mean, I definitely know what I'm not looking for in someone mm-hmm. um, and what I'm looking for in someone. And I just can't be, I can't be someone's mom again. Like, I just can't be that person. Um, 
I, if you, I'm not asking someone to be perfect. Like if you have things in your past, I'd love to talk to you about it. Like mm-hmm. let's work through it, but like actually work through it. Like yeah. if you, if something is affecting you that much, go to therapy, do stuff like I, I'm avid therapy. Like I think everyone should be in therapy. I was yeah. in therapy for a time or two, but like, I, I just think everyone should do it, but don't continuously make it an excuse for your bad behavior. Um, mm-hmm. Like just learning. Yeah. It's, it's like, I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to do my best to remember when I tell certain clients who go through certain traumatic things where it's kind of like, it's okay for you to experience that hurt and pain, mm-hmm. but it's previous what I talked about, but it, it was, it's a, in a better quip. I, I have to go back to my notes. To remember it's probably highlighted in the book, but it's like, um, you Oh, pretty much over time, you can't let that hurt define, like I already said, define like who you are and things like that. Right. Um, because, you know, you are self-sabotaging yourself or um, it's just like a thing where you have to do your best to, you know, progress because that is something that's holding on to you. And as horrible as that trauma is, not to trying to tell you it's going to go away. Mm-hmm. You're just going to do a better job at responding at, to those um, inflammations when they happen. And you got let that hold it has on your life let go right and but um because i am looking at time and i want to you know save the last little bit for some little fun because cost was talking about some stuff oh yeah if you want to bring that up again yeah i'll no. let you do that but you kind of segue us into um us talking about so um if we have some young gentlemen who are listening to this show and they're like oh my gosh who's that Girl, she's so delicious. She's got soap. She's got a brain. She's got all these things. And so, if she's someone. Got soap. <laughs> she's got soap. <laughs> she's got soap. You'll be clean. I have soap. That's not a lie. So, what catches your eye in a guy? Um. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what do I'm, you want? Just tell me. I'm really drawn to passionate people. Um. Mm-hmm. I, I think if you have a passion for something that you love and you um, want to do that, creative people, passionate people, I love that. Um, or a man, yeah, <laughs> like, what, like a know. manly man, like. Oh, okay. Um, I'm 24. You gotta lift weights. I feel like I'm past the phase where I date to date. Like I want to date to. No, straight up. Like I feel like a lot of people aren't Hell like yeah. that anymore. Like all my friends are getting married. Granted, they're younger than me, so it's like. <laughs> like if I was getting married at 22, I would not want to get married at 22 no. because I know who I was at 22, and it's Robert, completely Robert, what's the different. divorce percentage for people under 25? 80. percent I don't like think 80%, there's, I don't right? think there's anything wrong with getting married young. Like I think I think, yeah. I think okay, it's yeah, totally yeah, yeah. valid. Like yeah. Um, I think it's I think people thrive when they get married young if they, especially I'll say like in the Christian community, like mm-hmm. people who get married young in that community, oh, yeah. those are the ones that thrive. I think because yeah. they are. A lot of the times in my, from what I've seen See, in my personal experience, I'm part of like the Eastern Orthodox church. Sure. So a lot of like Romanians, Ukrainians mm-hmm. that get married at like 19, 20, have 15 kids and then they're forced to love each other. They don't get divorced, but I don't, I don't want to call it happiness. Sure. <laughs> we could definitely talk. We got to have her back to talk about like, lo- like there's like, there's new, I, I get that. Yeah. I want, I really want you to speak more about oh, that. We talk about okay. That. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So, All right. and, and I, I want to mention something because I listened to the last podcast too, and you were talking about um, people with 100k income. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah. So I don't think that's a. I think that's an outlandish requirement to have of someone really? who's in their 20s. You know, it's really real. I'd be talking to some of these. Well, it's derogatory. I can't say female. But I've talked to these women sometimes, yeah. and they have these requests of me, and I'm just like, yo. Got my own house, you know, I'm handsome. I think that's a goal to have when you're 40. Like that, I think if you're in a relationship, 50K, like if that, if you have a full-time job, you're making 50 a year, that's a sustainable job to be able to have like a full-time life with someone. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm also someone too where like I want to work through my life. I don't want to be a stay-at-home mom, which contrary to popular, like, um, I want to work. I love working. I'm kind of a workaholic. I loved my last job. I worked for the Blazers. Like, I loved it. Um, well, yo, yeah, the Blazers. Yeah, really. <laughs> he hates the Blazers. What are you talking about? The Blazers I are going to I work for the NBA. I'll say NBA. <laughs> no, that's fine. Like, no, that's fine. The Blazers alone. are going to beat the Lakers tonight. <laughs> I need you to shut up real quick. 
<laughs> Damien Lillard. Oh my god. <laughs> He's, oh he's a blazer hater. I'm not he's a blazer hater. Yeah. Oh, we're not going to get into this. This is a long story. Ask the question <laughs> because we're on the NBA. See, I'm helping you. What question? The 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 Selena Powell. The, yeah. This is a great oh transition. Actually, we're on the NBA. Oh we want to do a quick like uh, in the news <gasps> for the culture. Okay. Do you know who Selena Powell is? I do not. Okay, she's an OnlyFans person. Who sure. Who she. Hooked up with Snoop and Six Nine and posted that publicly okay. and more and whatever. She's a cloud chaser and that's how she makes her money. Sure. She's, uh, she's she didn't she's not for the streets. She built the streets. But um, <laughs> you she, wrote that last night. I it was up here. <laughs> he wrote but her, she had her friend on a podcast, the No Jumper podcast, hosted by Adam Twenty Two, and her friend talked about how on her birthday, she um, <laughs> seven Phoenix Suns guys came into the hotel allegedly. Room. Allegedly, and she gave them all blowies <laughs> in a row, no breaks, in a row, no water, swallowed it all. She was a a warrior. Mm-hmm. warrior. Okay. And that blew up on NBA Twitter. Is every time like a guy has a highlight play, it'll just be her picture number one like comment. Oh, <laughs> what we forgot to mention too as well, she was having sexual relations with a uh, team official. Yeah. But when they all came in, and then she all got them in a circle. I'm just said a circle because I'm imagining a circle. It was really? A square. I see a line. <laughs> I Wrong. see a line. It was up. a square. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. So she. Yeah. She, and and two problematic. Well, I shouldn't say problem. Two things also that we have to like squeeze in is she was like, oh yeah, I was lit like multiple times, yeah. and she was like, oh, I have to do this to get lit, and I was like, whoa, lol, suit alert, lol, suit alert. But she's like. She didn't look back at it as like a bad memory, and my only take is because it is whatever. It's not just women; anyone in general. If you want to be a gigolo, wiggolo, tigolo, whatever you want to be, be proud with it. It's like it's like you can say whatever you want, right? right. Like if someone wants to say the N word, you can say the N word, but just know there's consequences yeah. to your actions. And, exactly. th- and that's what happened to her too. She got fired from her job. We'll say what? Yeah, she had like a decent job too. She was like Do working at a law firm. As like a, I don't, I don't, I don't know if it was a paralegal, but she was like, she was and like, and she had an OnlyFans, and she had an OnlyFans, so but she, but now it's just OnlyFans. She's making money from, <laughs> which definitely probably helped her OnlyFans and probably makes her more money. But um, that was her consequence. She um, y- yes. Okay, yeah, we're filming. Wait, yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries. Gotcha. You guys got to get a sign out there. That's so there's, there's it a says song. filming in progress. <laughs> yeah, we'll cut. We'll the dog cut. didn't see it. He didn't we'll, see it. We'll cut that, but it's fine. Okay. Um, if that was your home girl, or actually from a female eye, what are you? What do you think about this? Because about the whole situation yeah, in general, whole situation. or OnlyFans, or just whole, whole uh, situ- just, just like I guess her situation um, and, and like making that public. I. I agree that everyone's going to do what they're going to do. Mm-hmm. Nobody's got control of anyone's whatever, you know, nobody has control of anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, but there will be consequences. So that's what I'll say about that specific, that situation yes, in general, because yes. I don't know. I- so what if this was your girlfriend? She like, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> I got the whole Blazer roster. I, I will say I'm not someone to support that. <gasps> I'm not just because of the morals that I have and what I you know, but everyone's mm-hmm. gonna do what they have to do. I'm not gonna judge people for what they're doing, um, but that's not something I would do, obviously. Um, and if I had a friend who did it, like I understand people make a lot of money doing that. I, I totally under I understand the appeal of it, mm-hmm. but I would just feel icky, <laughs> you know. Like it's just Sticky. like a, it's just Sticky. like an icky, you know. Okay, because because we are a show where we don't want like, because like it's just so much masculine musk mm-hmm. on here um if <laughs> i'm using you i'm sorry if cops was like yo i ate seven boxes of <laughs> seven poom pooms oh you okay. ate seven whaps in a row i <laughs> would be like hey man <laughs> i was trying to make a joke <laughs> I was trying to make a joke, man. Please excuse me. No, God. please excuse me. It failed completely because I'm looking at the time. Anywho, all I'm saying is, I like, 
I think for, when it comes to like this whole in general, because like I think because guys are like, well, if a female does that, then she's like, um, she's this, right? right? Where I'm like, you ha- have to have the ability to like, you can also say like that's one aspect that she does or whatever, yeah. but you gotta have the college flexibility to know that she's she's more than that, like right. or they'll. Mm-hmm. Like, no, absolutely. Like, and, and 100%. It's, no, so it's just kind of like, same thing when you do that stuff to her, she can call you a dog and say all this other stuff. So it's right. kind of like, I just think sometimes guys, like, well, you know, because we're in a, a man's world, we don't have that ability. We're like, yo, just because she does that doesn't mean she's that, those behaviors. Right. I will not stand for. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's the same thing, like, I'll bring up, like, the Cardi B song. Like, it's the same thing where she had this song that came out. Way explicit, right? Like, just the most. And then you look, you, like, listen to other rap songs that men have created, and it's like, okay, what's yeah. what's the difference here? Um, same level of whatever, but it's, one has been, what, you know what I'm saying? Sex, like, hyper, sexual Yeah, one yeah. has been, like, put on this pedestal, and one is, you know, one's okay, one's not. Yeah. Things like that. There you go. No, I I agree 110. percent Or well, this episode will come after the other one. So like, I was trying to explain to those guys where I was like, hey, like I feel like the best compliment I one. They're trying to be for one. The song is just a song, just to be like, yo, we're talking about sex. Where right. it's kind of like no one's really talking about rap city, the Cardi B songs that are actually talking about uplifting. Like we're like, I. Ha- it's not problematic where it's like people are like, this is such an uplifting thing. Where I'm like, no, I can give you seven female rappers and they're talking about some real shit that we're right. not yeah. talking about. Yeah. This song is just a sex song. Like, it's just, just, it's, yeah. like, it's just a fun song. And I give them credit because they're doing this in this type of climate, but that's neither here nor there. But um, I feel like the WAP saga will continue. <laughs> we talked about that in our last episode. <laughs> yeah. With yeah. three dudes. With three dudes. <laughs> gotcha. I see, I see, yeah. I see. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're, it's a good point then. Batteries are almost dead. So cool. just want to thank you, Rachel, for coming on, sharing yeah. some stories, Thanks getting yourself me. in a little bit of trouble. Sure. We're, not, ble- we're, not, believing. we're not believing we're not any out of We'll out edit the them out. Don't nah, worry. nah, nah. We, we want problems. <laughs> <laughs> um, nah. But yeah, you know, it's yeah. been uh, your boy, Koss. And it's your boy, your boy, Rob. Get this soap. We're going to sc- subscribe. Yeah, get the soap. You know, this is going to be our very first, you know, commercial, you know, in the middle, you know, mm-hmm. sponsor. Mm-hmm. Get this. <laughs> get this soap all right thank you <laughs> thank you subscribe like and uh yeah yeah yeah, we go, yeah subscribe like share you know we out here about to get some free soap free soap see that's you guys what... can get free soap i'll give you guys free soap yay uh, have me on again i'll bring some free soap yay. musk flavor please i'll try to i just find want to scent that a lady's gonna be like yo he's so sophisticated and smart just by the smell i got i under i have just just the scent and, I know exactly what to and do. And he care about my emotions? Yep. Ooh. Ooh.